This is elk sirloin tip right here. Timber butte elk ranch. Vendor at the market. A few steps that way. I seasoned it simply with salt and some oil that I that I put some Southwest, um, some of Starlight Herb Southwest seasoning into. Okay, so this is all I put on the elk steak. I got a cook going on the potatoes. I got a part cook going on the potatoes, just so we weren't standing here watching water boil. Okay, you all right with that? And let me do a little chiffonade on some basil. <laughs> That's a decent sound system. Decibels? All right, guys, this is basil, right? I promise I am rolling only basil leaves here, and I'm going to run this knife through it, and this is called a chiffonade. If I were to translate that, it would be shredded or torn to rags, okay, a chiffonade. And when I do basil, I do a chiffonade, because if I were to continue to run my knife through it and chop it more finely, like I would rosemary or parsley, it would be all bruised and it would brown, okay, because the basil leaves are quite delicate. I'm actually going to season my potatoes with this fresh basil, a little bit of salt, I'm sure, and probably some pepper. You guys have some fine handcrafted wood items of your own, right? Right? From these nice vendors here at the market who painstakingly produce the stuff for you. Infomercial. Infomercial now. <laughs> they, these are wonderful. These are wonderful, as is the wood tools that I can get here at the market as well. And yes, I purchased with my own part, well, my own U.S. currency, okay? All right? Well worth it to me. I just don't wait for handouts. Even though the vendors are nice enough to throw me a few products to use so you can try it, so you can taste it and get an idea of what you may do with some of the stuff. Okay, so I have some Yukon Golds that are from Conrad's Produce over there in the corner. And I just simply simmered them in water for about 20 minutes. In a few minutes, I'll drain that and season those up for you. And yeah, you're gonna, you stick around long enough, I'll give you a taste, okay? So, I'm gonna heat this grill. I'm gonna heat this little grill and sear the elk. How many of you have had elk? Yeah? You've had elk. I think you probably have, sir. Right? And how many of you um, have tried this Timber Butte elk? It does not taste gamey. Like the wild harvested stuff, your husbands are out there blasting in the, I'm sorry. Uh, harvest from the wilderness? Okay, it doesn't taste gamey because the diet is controlled and it's wonderfully nutritious, far more so than the average feedlot beef you're getting for cheap at the grocery store. Okay, it's way higher in omega 3s, which is healthy, very healthy for you. Okay, all I'm gonna do is eat this grill. And now what did I season the elk with? All I put on there was some salt and I used a little bit of oil that I had put some chili, uh, some of the uh, Southwest spice from Starlight Herbs right over here. And so that, I kind of used these, fla these flavored oils to drizzle on the plate for garnish. Okay, I'll show you that when I played up an example for you. So again, all I did was I hit the elk sirloin steak with some Southwest oil and some salt. I'm gonna heat my grill, I'm gonna get it very nice and hot, and really I'm just gonna sear this out a couple minutes per side. It's not gonna be rare, but I'm gonna cook it to about medium. I don't wanna cook it to well, it'll be tough and chewy, and I'd frankly rather not say, yeah, I'm a chef here, try my food, and have it be tough and chewy for you. Okay, a little bit of blush in the center is not a problem, so we're aiming for medium, okay? All right, so tell me why you come to the market. Genuinely curious, help me out. Fresh produce. Fresh produce? Yeah. All right, who else? A volunteer for the sheriff's department. Okay, get your plug. Okay, what do you have to say? <laughs> I'll give you 20 seconds. And you over in the corner over there and get their fingerprints done. Fingerprints done? Okay. Big Brother's looking and over your shoulder, guys. No, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for having the public safety at, at heart. Very good. All right. So each week I'll do two demos, okay? One at 10 and one at 12. And then actually Laura here is capturing the footage. So if you miss some of the ones in the past, like the lobster fried rice or some of the other stuff we've done, you can throw her five bucks and you'll get an hour. You'll get two 30-minute demos from weeks prior. Okay? So my grill is very hot, right? Uh, I got that as a wedding present some years ago, and uh, I got the grill and children and summers with my kids. <laughs> So this is a, um, 
It's just a stovetop grill. You can get grill pans of all sorts. I don't know. This is, I think, a Circulon brand. I don't know if they're available out there anymore. It was a gift, you know, quite a few years ago. So I'm not sure if they're around. And I didn't touch the raw meat, okay? I'm very particular about that. Do you see that? The chefs on TV that are handled chicken, then they grab the door handle and the pepper mail, right? <laughs> so I'm just going to give that a very quick sear on each side. And again, I did a par cook on the potato, or parsley, actually fully cooked, I cooked it ahead for you, on the, on the potatoes. I also have some green beans, also from, um, also from Conrad's Produce. I have some green beans and I simply, okay, hot, hot pan, short period of time, okay? Again, I have some green beans from Conrad's Produce and I just blanched them. I brought some water to a bowl, I plunged them in there, and went for about 40 seconds or so. So they are fully cooked, but sometimes when I blanch things, I just do it to get a bright green color, and then later, right, at dinner service, then I'll just do a quick saute, or grill, or something like that. Okay, so it lessens your cooking time, and it also brightens the chlorophyll of any green vegetable. So again, if you want to get a bright color on your broccoli, on your asparagus, on your green beans, on your snow peas. Snow peas, not necessarily so, because they're so delicate anyways, you don't really need to blanch them. Okay, so anything that touches raw, I'm gonna retire. And now that the meat is cooked, I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna let it rest. Again, this is elk sirloin from Timber Butte Elk Ranch right here at the market. And I'm just putting a quick sear on it. And I'll let you try it with some smashed Yukons. I'm going to give these about 30 seconds, and what would I be doing as I touch that? I'm checking for firmness, exactly. Protein tightens up and gets more firm as it cooks. So I know what the raw product feels like. Why? Because I handled it when I seasoned it. And so all I seasoned this with was salt and some oil that I had put Southwest Spice into. Um, Starlight Herbs has a variety of dried herbs and spices. They're right over here. Florence does a great job. I'm actually going to season these Yukons with some of her. This is a new one. I'm totally jazzed about this. I'm sorry. I get really excited about simple things, okay? This is a cheesy garlic sprinkle. And I tell you, I'm going to probably also use this in my second demo at noon when I do a risotto. And I'm going to serve that with some shrimp, some golf shrimp that I got from Porterhouse for you. Right? How many farmers markets are treating you this well? Huh? Huh? Name one. I'm waiting. <laughs> so I want to see you with bags of like stuff, okay, before you leave here? Okay, right? No? Just come for the entertainment value? <laughs> okay, so my Yukons, I had simply cubed and I, I simmered them or boiled them for about 20 minutes. Okay, I'm just going to get some of the liquid out of the way. But I'm not going to drain them entirely dry because I'm not going to dump milk and butter in there. I'm just going to hit them with some of Starlight Herbs, cheesy garlic stuff here, the cheesy garlic sprinkle. I'll probably give it a hit of white pepper just for kicks. And you can certainly use black pepper. And then why don't we... I didn't bring a potato masher. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? I know if I can do this stuff on a camp stove at the market, you can do it at home. All right? All right? So where did I get the Yukons and the beans? Conrad's Produce, right? Ira Powers provided some basil, but there's basil at a few other vendors' booths as well. And where'd I get the elk? Did I go to the grocery store? Or did I get it from Timber Butte, right over here? It's very good. Now, why would I buy elk instead of using beef from the store? Why would I buy a local pro uh, local product? Because you see, it's good. I plant her in the audience to say these things, I'll take care of you later, babe, all right? So, you can, there's a lot of reasons why one may choose to purchase items to eat here at the market, because uh, one, you can support a local economy. Two, this elk is gonna be far more nutritious than your average feedlot beef that you find at the grocery store. It's way higher in omega-3s. It eats grass out in the field, okay? It's not pumped up on grain at the feedlot prior to harvest, okay? So it's a wonderful product. It does not taste gamey. Maybe you've had elk before. How many of you have had elk before? Yeah? Do you like it? Yeah. Weigh in. 
Wait, wait. What did they, what did you not like about it? Okay. Well, you're gonna try this, right? Okay. And let me know. Serious. Let me know if it's agreeable. Okay. I'm genuinely curious. Now I'm gonna be really embarrassed and nervous if she says no. I don't like it. And I'll be honest. Please do. So, what did I add to the potatoes? Cheesy garlic. That's all I added. Now I might put some salt in there. We'll see. We'll see. I am gonna hit it with a little bit of salt. And here we go. You wanna look fancy for your friends? What do you do? You just hold your hand up higher. Okay? Right? No? How many of you employ that trick? Come on. I use my same recycled humor, almost humor, every week. <laughs> okay, so guys, tell me again why you come to the market. To watch it. She is so nice. I plant her also in the audience. You get free food. Yeah. Free food. <laughs> Gee whiz. Come on, guys. I went to, home to support the wonderful local vendors. <clears throat> Let's try this again. Why do you guys come to the market? For the food. Okay. Some people are more teachable than others, I can tell. Summer. Why would you want to learn in the middle of summer? So why would I smell that? Why would I get the aroma before tasting? First of all, I can't get a good indicator when it's hot, hot, hot. I need to let it cool for a few seconds. Okay, but you can only taste a few things on your palate. What are those? Sweet, sour, bitter, bitter, and Very good. You get the idea. Anyways, you can smell a lot more flavor compounds than you can taste on your tongue. Okay? So, why does food... That's why food tastes flat when you have a cold, right? Right? Because you lose that sense, that sense of smell. So that's why I go for that indicator prior to tasting, because here it is hot right out of the pan. I'm getting that very quick and simple way to make garlic mash, garlic mashed potatoes. A little hit of cheese. Wonderful. Okay. So did I add butter and milk and a bunch of stuff? No. I left some of the liquid, the cooking liquid there. Now, if I was in my own kitchen, I would actually save that cooking liquid and use it in a soup, even a cold soup, okay? So, all right, so here we have some mash. Here we have some elk. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a slice. Here I have some, some uh, Eric Ovair, uh, spelled haricot verts, okay? It's a uh, French green bean, okay? And... I used your sauce last week my Did you make some herb oils? Oh, we had it. Everyone loved it. They thought it was so wonderful. Oh, good. I mean, and and, and you all took all the, the you better take all the credit, right? Oh, no. You better take the No, no. You take the credit. That's why, you, that's why, look, I'm here to make you look better, okay? Right? Get yourself a nice cutting board, a decent hunk of German steel, right? And you get yourself a nice pepper mill, a pinch bowl of salt, and you have that sitting by your stove. Okay? And then your friends are all, wow, you must be a savvy culinarian. Okay? Why? Because you are. Okay, so here we go. Let's go ahead and I'm going to show you how I might plate this. I'll use these little guys for that. Uh, any objections if I put these drippings into here? No. Nope. Hmm? Okay. I hate to wait. Even little stuff like that, right? A few cents here and there that someone might wash down the sink. I'm thinking, hey man, that's free flavor. Right there, I'm going to utilize that. All right, so you're going to grab some of your cheesy garlic sprinkle from Florence over there, Starlight Herbs. You know what, I wanted to hit this with basil also, a little fresh basil. You could use any herbs that you have on hand. Okay. Oh man, got wildlife up here. Okay, so we have a nice little bit of blush there, so it's not going to be dry, tough, and chewy. Okay? And keep your knives sharp, and, and uh, I would suggest, if you don't have one already, get yourself a nice 8-inch chef's knife or 6-inch or 10-inch chef's knife. I want to get a 12-inch chef's knife, but that's more for shock value. Really, I, this is what I use the most, right here. And so have a knife that's larger than the thing you are cutting. Even if you're dicing simply one carrot, use the proper tool for the job, okay? And just get in the habit of this motion right here. Okay, I need to know what I'm serving you. 
It's not my way of just getting a taste, Paul, well, I guess it is. Okay. <laughs> We've got an excuse. Got a darn good excuse. I'm gonna leave it just like that. Oh, you're so nice. Southwest Spice from Florence. Woo! So, that's all that went on. Gave the Starlighter its plug. Yeah. Okay. And no, I don't get paid from the vendors, by the way. If I found something decent, I want to share it with you. Okay? Give us some ideas. Here I am, playing with the thing here. Let me just get on with the program here. Welcome to help yourself to any of these materials over here on this table. There's a variety of recipes for salmon that Dave at Porterhouse was nice enough to give me so I can pass them on to you. And we tried that uh, two weeks ago, the one from Porterhouse. Yeah? Oh, that was so good. We're oh, doing it again today. Good. With I'm glad. Potatoes. Very nice. I promise I did not put her up to that. <laughs> no, this place is wild salmon and it, it has a... He yeah, does a great job. If you guys are around at noon, I'll do a demo using golf shrimp from Porterhouse. And I'm going to do a sweet corn risotto with that. So I'll show you how to make a risotto. You'll taste it all. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Are we treating you right here at the Eagle Saturday Market? Huh? Who has your loyalty? All right, so you, you get a taste. Thank you. I'll ask again. Who has your loyalty? The market. Oh, a handful of you get some too. <laughs> Are you getting tired of me building stuff in rings? No? So I might serve something like this in this manner. I'm not going to smooth it flat, I'm just kind of containing that, getting an idea there. I'm going to make a little bundle of green beans. Conrad's Produce was nice enough to grow green beans for you this season. And we'll go like so, like so. And if we hit it with something that has some color, how about some of that same Southwest chili oil? There, and why not a couple of dabs of something green on this side? And why not a little bit of purple basil? Ira Powers, the guy who has the bread. Have you guys tried his bread? Yeah. Wonderful product. And no, the vendors don't pay me to say that. You guys are going, yeah, right. Yeah, what I did is here I take here I take olive oil and just give it a handful of bark, parsley and basil and whirl it in a blender. These ones I simply toasted the spices briefly in a pan and then mixed in. I used peanut oil because I didn't want a green hue fighting against these colors. And so this is a curry ginger oil. This, and I'll saute the shrimp in that for the risotto later. And this is Southwest Chili Oil. These spices are available from Florence over there at Starlight Herbs. Let's give it a little hit of basil, right like so. Is that worth eating? Oh, you guys are so nice. You guys want to taste it now, right? Remember to grab the demo and start eating it? I was like, watch. That's where you have the face don't touch. Well, no, that comes from people handling all this stuff, like mid-demo thinking I'm selling it. Well, no, you can get all this stuff at the market, but I'm not selling it. Okay, I'm going to refer you to the vendors. I'm not taking your money. But Laura's going to take your money for the discs that you're going to buy. Okay? <clears throat> Hint. You have one for that last week that my husband was going to get those out Yeah? Get those flies out there? I have 10 right, copies guys, of every single one. So what, what, did today, so uh, what did we do last week? What did we do last week? Fruit salad and... Uh, that was scallops. Scallops. Seared skis. Seared sea scallops with fresh fruit salsa. Now is that worth eating, huh? Yeah. What's a scallop? Scallop is a mussel from a, a there's, a, there's a there's a variety of uh, of uh, wonderful things that we get from the sea. They're clams, uh, oysters, scallops, mussels. 
Uh, scallop is a large shell like so. The muscle is kind of like a slice off a cylinder. The sea scallops are quite large as opposed to bay scallops, which are about that size. And it's a wonderfully sweet muscle. It really, uh, I'm really impressed with the product that Dave has over there at Porterhouse. And I'm equally as impressed with the elk and the other items you can get right here at the market. Okay, so you want to definitely go over there and chat with Diana from Timber Butte Elk Ranch. Horseshoe Bend, local product, right? There are a lot of reasons why you'd want to support a local economy, right? Name some. Help me out here, guys. Keep a local, fresh stuff. You know, the average piece of produce that is on your grocery store shelf traveled 2,000 miles. You know that? Really? On average. That head of lettuce, that tomato, traveled some distance to get to you. So why not support a local economy? I'm probably going to need more than that, huh? <laughs> why not support a local economy? Get some of those trucks off the road, perhaps lessen some fuel expenditures, right? Support the local economy, keep the dollar here, create some jobs locally, right? and make sure my yakking isn't all in vain.